Hi everyone, myself Robin Joseph and today we will be dealing with the very basics of algorithm analysis. Moving on, why we need algorithm analysis? So it is for two reasons, one is to check the correctness and the next one is to check the performance of an algorithm. So in checking correctness, we'll be checking whether the program satisfies all the requirements, say like boundary conditions, etc. But the main reason why we analyze an algorithm is to find the performance. When telling about performance, there are multiple criteria for analyzing the performance. It could be based on the time taken for execution, or it could be the memory utilization, or it could be the power consumption, etc. But mainly, we focus on the time criteria. How quick we will get the solution for a particular problem. It is called as time complexity. Now, we, when we analyze the time, there is a certain issue. Suppose I have a program which runs in 5 milliseconds in, in a particular system. And then when I run the same program in some other system, I'll be getting it in say 3 milliseconds. So there's a time difference. The reason is simple. It depends on the machine specification or hardware specification. The CPU speed, the RAM size, everything contributes. So it is always better to find a time function instead of the exact time. The time function will be independent of hardware. So now comes the question. How we can find a time function from an algorithm? The solution is a method called as frequency count or step count method. With the help of an example, we will see how this frequency count method works. So frequency count is nothing but it counts the number of statements executed in a program. How frequently or the number of times the statement is being executed. So in the given <coughs> in the given slide you can see this is an algorithm for adding the numbers in an array where a is an array and n is the number of elements. So you can see s is initialized with 0 which is a one-time process the frequency is 1 and there's a loop where i varies from 1 to n this is occurring n plus 1 times and there is a statement s is equal to s plus a of i which means each time is added to s which occur n times and this is outside the loop you are finally returning the result which is occurring one time so we will see why there is n plus 1 iterations in this loop the reason is simple when i varies from 1 to n there are n iterations or that statement is executed n times, the condition will be true. And when the i value becomes n plus 1, the condition becomes false. So basically there are n plus 1 comparisons. 1 to n, it is true, that is n, plus 1 time, the condition becomes false. And as, as you can see, <coughs> the statement s is equal to s plus a of i. Whenever the condition is true, this is going to execute. So the condition is true for n times, so this statement execute n times. And <coughs> we find the total count which is 2n plus 3, which is nothing but a time function. Now for that particular program, we have got a time function f of n is equal to 2n plus 3, which is usually denoted as order of n. Again we are, instead of this function, we are giving it as or we are showing it as order of n which is a classification process so next thing is how you can convert from an equation to a order of kind of thing it's very simple what you have to do is you have to take the equation you have to take the term with highest degree in this case it is n power 1 which is the highest degree take that term discard the coefficient part and you will get order of n. So we will see that with a few more examples. You can consider a time function 2n square plus 3n plus 5. 
Now how you can say the order? Again you will take the term with highest degree which is 2n square and then you discard the coefficient part which means this function is of order of n square. We will see one more example. Maybe you could do it this year on. It is n cube plus 40n square plus 5. You are right. We will take the term with highest degree which is n cube. The coefficient is 1. You can discard it which means it is order of n cube. So, from an equation, I have easily said that, okay, it is of order, say, n or n square or n cube. Can I mathematically prove that a problem belongs to a particular class? Of course you could. It is with the help of asymptotic notations. So, in the next section or next lesson, we will see what is an asymptotic notation and how we can say a particular time function belongs to a particular class. Thank you.